You ever sit down and wonder if you put your underwear on backwards? Okay, people, today's figure of fodder is a Bluefin edition. If you watched Tuesday's review, it was over the SH Figure Arts Thor Ragnarok Hulk. Bluefin sent me some toys to review. I very cool of them to do, but a lot of it was lines I don't cover or properties I'm not familiar with or I have a passing knowledge of. And when I do reviews like that, people usually go, hey, stupid, why are you even reviewing that if you don't know about it? Because I love toys. I may not know everything about Dragon Ball Z or Street Fighter or Tekken or most, well, a little bit, I know a little bit about Star Wars, but I love action figures in general. So I'm going to take a quick look at the rest of the box that they sent. It's figures that I, I don't know if I like, or maybe I'll like them, or in one of them's case, I'm afraid it's going to put me down a rabbit hole. Like I said earlier this week, I took a look at the SH Figure Arts Thor Ragnarok Hulk. It's a pretty good figure. I like how dynamic it is, but it just doesn't feel thick enough. It doesn't feel big enough. And then the face itself, it's close. It's Hulk but it's not quite Ruffalo Hulk. And then what they did with the eyes and stuff, uh, looking off to the side, almost a little bit cross-eyed, not giving us a head that doesn't have the helmet on it, uh, all downfalls. But I do like this better than build a figure even though everybody's been saying, hey, go get the Marvel Select. It's awesome. I may have to go and do that. But the next thing I pulled out of the box was the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z Frieza. I believe this is the Resurrection version. As most of you know, I mostly buy the model kit line. Uh, the SH Figure Arts line is looks nice. People have told me, go grab it, but man, that's a lot of money to go dropping on a line I'm starting this late in. Now looking at Frieza here, I love the sculpt. It's nice, it's thin, it's fluid. Like I said, I do the model kits and it's a little bit segmented. It's a little bit blocky. Uh, getting this in hand, I don't know, it's kind of tempting. It just flows from bottom to top, front to back, side to side however you choose to do it like that. And then I like the white. It's not just a plain white. There's some blue shading thrown in, but not super heavy. You actually kind of have to look for it. It's subliminal. You look at it and go, oh, that looks great, but I don't know why. It's because of that extra little shading. And then get up to the head. This cocky bastard. They nailed it. That's what I'm going to say. They nailed the look here. And I said the look was fluid too. The articulation is just as fluid. You move it, it's going to go where you want it to go. Sometimes the shoulders drop a little bit, but you just have to work your way back up to there. Now this is a small figure. Here it is compared to the model kits of Super Saiyan Goku and Frieza. Here it is with the figure arts Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Vegeta. This is the only figure arts figure I have, and again, from what I hear, this one's a little bit small, a little bit scrawny uh, on an older body type. Now for accessories, Frieza being such a small figure, they packed in a hell of a lot of accessories here. He comes with the two fists, he comes with the two splayed out hands, he comes with some relaxed hands, he comes with kind of a lazily pointing finger, and then he comes with a stiff pointing finger. <laughs> He comes with a pair of flat feet, and then he comes with a pair of leaping feet. This is for when he's up in the air. He comes with three head sculpts. He comes with kind of the... <laughs> he comes with the... And then he comes with the... He comes with two tails. One is kind of bunched up. It only has the ball joint at the... Well, the butt joint. And then he comes with a longer stretched out tail, kind of his leaping tail, and it has an extra swivel in the middle of it. My problem with that is... It doesn't really lock in. You go to articulate it and get too close to the body, and it just pops out. And most of the time, because of the weight, this is adding to the ass of it, you're going to have to use the tail as a tripod to help him stand up. He comes with a halo, which I guess represents the resurrection look here. It just plugs into the top of the head, not a problem whatsoever. And then he comes with two power effects. One is a ball above the pointing finger. It's got a clip to go around the wrist. And then the other one's a firing out effect. And because of it being up in the air, this goes on the flight stand, which is also included. <laughs> Thank you, Bandai. You couldn't do that for the Sith probe droid. All in all, I dig the figure. I just wish I collected this line. I, well, I say wish. Uh, Money-wise, I don't want to go back and buy all of these I'm completely content with the model kit line so I won't call this fodder but it, it I don't think it's going on the shelf this may be part of a Let's see about a giveaway at the end of this. Next up is the Storm Collectibles Tekken 7 Haihachi. And I probably butchered that. I, I apologize. I usually do. Haihachi. Hihachi. 
Hihachi? I'm gonna say it again, I didn't play a lot of fighting games, and so I'm not familiar with this character at all. But action figure wise, Storm Collectibles, I know they put out a good product. And I love how these guys get down with action figures. I mean, look at the sculpt. Some of the seamless looks they can get away with by having a rubber skin over the a torso skeleton. That's all, that's what I'm gonna call it. But just look at the details on this thing. On the gi, the crosshatch pattern, the paint, the wear, the tears, just how it looks. The skin tone that they put on the body and the scar on the chest and then the tampo tiger head on the back it just everything looks beautiful and I, I'll say it it's beautiful and the articulation works out just as beautifully now I will say the head is kind of hard to manipulate because of the rubber skin but for it not having another joint down there you can get up and down I mean you can get all around now this figure comes with several sets of hands he comes with a couple of fists he comes with two flat palms he comes with relaxed hand and kind of a tense relaxed hand if that makes sense and I've always said storm collectibles have the hand thing down perfectly that's kind of rubbery they pop on and off nicely but on this figure I go to pop the hand and the joint comes out with the hand it's not a huge problem I mean I can just take it and get under a little bit it comes right off it's just that the hand connector ends up stronger than the wrist the ball joint that goes in there he also comes with three head options uh, he's got kind of the stern look he's got kind of a smiling gritting teeth I, it, kind of a chip monkey and then of course a screaming head what fighting game isn't complete without screaming heads he also comes with two effects uh, one's kind of a wind effect that goes around the arm it doesn't really attach anywhere so I, it only works like this where it's just kind of resting on the arm and then he comes with an electric effect that forms down over the fists and those do hold on a little bit better you turn them upside down they're not gonna fall right off like I said the articulation on a storm collectibles figure I it's well <laughs> well hold on I haven't made it to the next figure yet but on all the storm collectibles figures I've gotten so far just amazing amazing articulation uh, paints look sculpt just presence it's a nice presence on the shelf any other property I would say this is going on the shelf this is figure but I, I may give this one away too because I, I have no attachment to the property whatsoever continuing on with storm collectibles next up is the Street Fighter 5 Alex I played a little bit more Street Fighter than most of the other fighting games but I never really played Alex I think he was later on but I love the look here uh, there was a company a few 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 years ago that made an Alex figure I always wanted to turn it into a Colossus the Russian version where he was on the farm you know so based on that this character uh, holds a little bit of sentimental value to me I love the sculpt of the boots and pants the shirt is a separate rubber piece that kind of just sits on the waist get up to the upper body and it's a little bit smooth but I like the muscle definition here my problem comes into play with uh, all the other storm figures that I have has a nice skin tone to it and maybe in the game he has this pale look but there is no shading to this whatsoever it, it's just kind of cast in that kind of dull flesh tone it almost feels like Alex is missing something compared to uh, other storm figures I don't know he just looks unfinished now like I said the skirt piece is a rubber piece and no problem getting up out of the way there the suspenders are also separate rubber pieces uh, they do tend to fly around as you're trying to pose them and stuff and you gotta always go back and fix that but I think I have more problem with the skirt <laughs> skirt I think I have more problem with the shirt riding up and getting in there whenever you're trying to articulate it and as far as articulation goes again it's storm collectibles there's a nice articulation but not as nice as other ones the elbows don't really get past 90 uh, even though it uses a double elbow joint the knees same way don't go past 90 and I think it's just because he's a just a big fella you know he's a big broad bulky boy for accessories he comes with a couple of fists he comes with a splayed out hand he comes with a relaxed hand and then he comes with flat palms he also comes with three different faces he's got his kind of bored look right out of the package he's got his gritting teeth face and then he has his screaming face again fighting game and then surprisingly he has different hangy down hairs that come out from under his bandana out of the package he has one that just kind of lays straight down he's got one that swoops to the right and then he's got a set that kind of swoops back that look really weird and to switch that out you just pop off the top of the head and then the bandana is a separate piece from the top of the hair and then the face is a separate piece that you just pop off the front what I like about it is that the seam line for the face is behind the ear so it's completely hidden here's a comparison shot with Street Fighter 5 Ryu and then with a Marvel Legends figure just to give you an idea of how huge this thing is so is it figure of fodder I don't know I like how it looks I want to say fodder 
because it really makes me want to make a Warpath slash Thunderbird or some other big type character. But at the same time, it looks like a badass figure. Kind of want to say figure? I kind of want to say fodder. This one I'm going to sit on. I, I like the look of it. I like messing around with it. Oh, and not to mention it comes with a fairly elaborate flight stand, which Hihachi does not come with. Next up, a figure I wasn't planning on getting, but here is the SH Figure Arts Justice League Flash. Justice League just doesn't really do anything for me, so I, I liked it okay, but I'm not rushing back to watch it again. So I've passed on both the figure arts team and the Mafex team. But looking at the sculpt here, they did a nice job of capturing most of it. I feel like they missed a couple things, and I couldn't tell you what it is. It just looks less busy than what my head thinks of when I think of the movie or the Moffex figure. But it is damn cool. But I feel like the color's a little brighter than what they had in the promotional shots, even on the back of the box. It's kind of a deep maroon red in the pictures. And on the figure, I wouldn't say it's a bright candy red or anything. It's still a little bit dark, but not quite that shade that I was looking for. But standing there, it is a cool figure. The hips do drop down and give you all the range of movement. I, it's at the ankles. I don't know why they put their standard wrist joint bigger down in the ankle. So you have to kind of manipulate it sideways to get side to side. Again, because of the sculpt of the boot, it comes up over the leg and just hinders some of the movement. And that's along with the torso crunching that much. I mean, nice range side to side, but that doesn't help with running poses. But I do like the scale here. Here he is with the SH Figure Arts Suicide Squad Deadshot and the Batman Trilogy Batman. But as far as accessories go, he comes with two fists, he comes with two relaxed hands, and he comes with two flat palms. But that's it for accessories. Kind of reminds me of Ant-Man from last year from Civil War, or year before last, whenever it was. Sure, they solicited that way, but once you get the box and you open it up and you think, oh, what? So the figure's cool, but I, it doesn't make me want to go out and get the rest of the Justice League, really. So if I were doing that, I would say shelf. Fodder-wise, I can't think of anything that this could be used for, so I may give this away, too. And then finally, there's this damn thing. You know when I usually talk about Bandai's movie realization line for Star Wars, I always go, yeah, it's cool. I dig the designs. I don't know why they're all samurai. I probably won't get it because it's 7-inch scale. But I think Bluefin kind of knew that, and they were like, here, who?" try this on for size. And just look at the sculpt. Yeah, like I said, most of the figures in these lines are samurais and it gets, I, I feel like it gets a little bit boring, but having one in hand now, oh, this is oh, fantastic. The rivets, the armor plates, even the kind of cloth underneath, they put striations in it to kind of give you uh, something to look at. At first, it seems overly complicated, but then you see the flat spots in the armor, like on the chest piece, and it kind of balances out a little bit. And then, touching on paint, there's a wash to the whole thing to bring out details, along with gold on the rivets and the seam lines and such. Just a nice contrast against what could have been just black and white paint job. There's a little red here and there for the cloth parts, like around the belt or holding the armor pieces up over the shoulders. And then silver for the straps and such. It just all works together. In your brain, you would think that's not going to work, but in hand, oh, it totally works. Works. And the articulation scheme, you think Bandai, uh, they're all working in the same company and such, but just like between the model kit line and the SH Figure Arts line, the realization line, it just kind of goes off and does its own thing. The elbows kind of remind me of Storm Collectibles. They have a full-on hinge at the wrist. The ankles kind of have a ball joint going down into them, and I feel like it needs a little bit more range. You can get tilt, but not as much as it probably should. Now one of the things I noticed is uh, kind of actually using that articulation. If you get too crazy with the legs, you're gonna pop the torso. You spread them out or you're posing. In fact, out of the package, the torso wasn't connected to the hips. And to add another level of frustration to that point, if you don't have the peg all the way up, the torso won't lock on. In fact, it just kind of touches the ball joint and comes back off, and then you think, uh, my shit is defective. But it's actually not. It's because of the T joint with the extra hinges and the ball joints and all that in there. It's easy to get it all mixed up. Plus, you have the skirt piece that goes on over the waist. You just have to get it up, pop it together, and then hope for the best whenever you're posing it. Now, he does come with several sets of hands. He comes with two fists. 
He comes with two loosely gripping hands and he comes with two tightly gripping hands. He comes with a spear that's in two parts because it's so dang big it wouldn't have fit in the box. Which speaking of the box, this being an $80 item or, or more, I think they're actually more expensive than that. The box makes it feel like a premium item. It's just nicely packaged. He comes with a flag with a flag holder that plugs into his back. And I really like the look of it, the kind of Imperial Cog redesigned for this line. But man, does it stick up and out of the way. And made out of plastic. I, I thought it would be cloth to kind of flow, just kind of hang, but no. And then he comes with this short sword. Again, just like the body, the handle of it, it's white, it's got some gold to it, it's got some dirt to it, it's just nicely detailed. The blade seems a little bit plain compared to everything else. And then it comes with a sheath that you can clip onto the belt. It just seems like there's a lot of thought put into this line. <laughs> And I've always thought, yeah, you're throwing Star Wars figures into samurai armor, big whoop de doo But having one in hand now, how beautiful it is, if it wasn't for the hip joint, I would call this just an amazing, amazing figure. And as is, I'm not going to rush out and buy every one of them I've seen. I think they have a lot of versions of the Stormtrooper, but I may be in for a Darth Vader, and the Darth Maul, it's always looked a little bit interesting. The reason this is going on a shelf, one, it's Stormtrooper, of course, and now that I have one in hand, I may need another one. And then two, at the Tamashi show last weekend, they showed a C-3PO in this line that I don't know. For some reason, I've got to have it. Is it because it looks like Dot Matrix or a scared as hell C-3PO? I don't know. But I was figuring that would be my first step into this line, and Bluefin proved me wrong. Definitely, definitely figure. Like I said, this box came from Bluefin, so you'll be able to buy these at Barnes & Noble or your online toy shop or your local comic shop, wherever you usually buy these sorts of things. I don't have a lot of those stores in person, so I usually go to Dorkside Toys or Big Bad Toy Store or wherever Bluefin brings these in. Now, as far as giveaway goes, I, let's try it. Let's try not to overcomplicate it. Just uh, post down in the comments, would you like Hi Hachi or would you like the Justice League Flash or the Resurrection Frieza. Now, let's keep it to the US. I only have so much money unless you're willing to pay shipping. If you're willing to pay shipping, then hey. <laughs> but I'm keeping the Stormtrooper and I, I guess I'm keeping the Alex. It's a pretty cool figure. Also like the video or, or don't dislike it. You know who you are. Man says he still likes Star Wars and it just brings on the pain. <laughs> it's been that kind of week, okay? But if you like this figure of fodder, comment, like, subscribe. I'll catch you on the foolish. I need more Gamorrean Guard, I think. I, it just look good with Jabba flanked. Of course, I also need a uh, throne. But you go that far, you also need a backdrop for Jabba. Then you need a section over here for Han and Carbonite. I, where does it end? I need more shelves, or more room, or more house.